Hello and welcome to Conscious TV. My name is Ian McNay. And today we've got a very special guest. Since we we started Conscious TV a few months ago, the number one requested guest in the consciousness section is Tony Parsons. And we're very lucky to have Tony here this morning. Good morning, Tony. Hi. And we're just going to talk a little bit about your life and your work and see what happens, see where it goes. We've got an open space for 45 minutes or so. So I'm just going to start, Tony, ask you a little bit about your childhood. I know when I was reading The Open Secret last night, you, you were saying that when you were very young, I think three years old, you kind of, you did feel a sense of oneness, but then that went at one point. Yes, it's what happens for most people. Uh, initially, as far as this perception is concerned, uh, as a very young child, a tiny child in, in iron arms, really, uh, there is just being this. There is no sense of identity at all. And then what happens with most people is that uh, that beingness, which doesn't identify with anything, suddenly recognises another identity. So, so it's suddenly an identity, say the mother, appears. And directly the mother, let's say, appears. There's a sudden sense that there's someone here. So like that's when separation emerges that's, in that's one way. That's the beginning of separation. Yeah. Uh, it, can't, it is not a thought, it's just a sudden sense that there is now someone else in this beingness, in this wholeness. And when there's someone else in this wholeness, suddenly there's someone here. And this is the first identification. And, and that is the beginning of it, what I call the dream of individuality, where that identification takes place and then there's a sudden contraction of energy which makes that child think that they live in a body and everything that's happening outside them is something else. So that from then on there's separation and directly there is separation, there is seeking for wholeness again. So you're trying to find what you had and in yeah. one way you lost. Yeah. Well you didn't really have it really. No one has wholeness, there is just wholeness. No, I understand. And, yeah. and yeah. what seems to happen uh, is that in some way or other there's a sense of separation from wholeness and we grow up in a world full of individuals who actually in the end feel separate from wholeness. And there's, in all of us, even though we're not necessarily aware of it, there's this feeling of this is not quite it. Absolutely. And we're, that's what we're seeking starts for most Absolutely. of us. Yeah. There's a sense of having lost something and there's a sense that the individual has to find it and that's the misconception. Yes. But you actually do remember this, this time when you were two or three years old to some extent. And that's great because in a way it's a reference point that's maybe helpful. Mm. Certainly I, I can remember actually not as, not as three years old but more seven years old when I was then a person. Right. I still felt that everything that was happening was somehow saying something other than me being separate. There was some, something that was being said in everything that was inviting me to see that there wasn't any separation. It was just a sense. I couldn't, at that time, you know, conceptualise it in that way. I just have. But there certainly was a sense that if there was a God, and of course as a tiny child you think there's a God, if there was a God and he loved me, then he would be talking to me in every way, in every way, through my body, through everything that was out there. It was just an idea. It was just a sense of something. Right. And I, I know also something I read that when you were in your teens, you investigated Christianity. You were somewhere yes. drawn to that for a time. Yes, I certainly was then a seeker like everyone else. So I looked at Christianity as one possibility, uh, uh, the answer to what I was looking for, and spent quite some time looking at that, a few years looking quite intently at that possibility, and then I just discarded it. Because somewhere for me, it was still saying that, that in some way or other, I had to become worthy to be whole. Um, you had and that baggage is, attached to yeah, it, Yeah, there was it? a whole yeah. baggage of yeah. lessons and teachings about how I, how I should become worthy to become everything or to become yeah. whole. Yeah. And it just, in the end, just fell apart for me. It just didn't mean anything. So I then looked at other things. What kind of other things did Gerzhev, you look at? Osho. This was still in your teens or this well, was later Osho on? Well, Osho was later on. Yes, I looked yeah. at Gurdjieff, yeah. Spensky, all of that lot. Yeah. I was looking here and there at uh, various uh, different ideas about this. Yeah. And then later on, um, I left my, my previous life and went to the Osho commune 
for about three years. But near the end of that three years, I then saw that in a way, I was still being given a list. Yes, yeah. You know, uh, go to therapy, meditate, all the different things yeah. that dear old Osho, bless his heart, in a way was recommending. So then again, I knew there was something about that that just didn't ring a bell. So when you were around 21, um, I, I, I think, I, again, I read somewhere that you... You, one day you were walking on um, uh, Park in Balham yeah. in South London mm. and you said something to God, show me your face. Well, there was, yeah, there was that intensity somewhere in me and um, I was walking across the park and although all, at the time I thought I was doing it, in fact there was a noticing that every footstep was uniquely different and never would be there again. That was all that came into me. I wasn't doing that. It was just a, an idea or a sense that everything was totally new and unique. And suddenly, I wasn't there anymore. So there was Tony Parsons. And there was nothing. There was no Tony Parsons. There was nothing. No experience of it. There was no experience. Of it. There was just nothing. Bang. Right. Or absolute love, if you want. <laughs> and then I walked out of the other side and I was still a seeker. I was still seeking. And what I now wanted was that. You wanted to get back to that feeling I wanted to get back to it, although I yeah. couldn't know it. I wanted to get back to that. So I then went on in various other ways to try and really, in a way, remember or grasp what yeah. couldn't be grasped. So it's like a reference point somehow. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I don't know about a reference point. I think a lot of people have glimpses of oneness, let's call it, or wholeness. And then they, 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 there's something that's recognised there, but when they come out of the other side of that, they then think that they can get to that, which I thought. They then think they had to yes. find that and, and, and embrace it. Yeah. And, that, and then later, much later on, um, what actually happened was that there was an individual seeker um, looking for this, and then suddenly there just wasn't. Yeah. It was over. There was no individual seeker. And what came out of that was the open secret. And also, I have to say, not for anyone, but the realisation that the whole idea that there is something called an individual seeker that has to find something else called enlightenment is totally misconceived. And how did this realisation change, whatever you call it, happen? And, you know, what was the circumstances? Well, were, you, were you looking more intensely than usual? No, the, the circumstance was that I wasn't any, any, anything anymore. There was no individual. It, what I call liberation happened when I was much older. And, yes. uh, and when that liberation happened, which was the end of there being any one, any individual seeker, it simply collapsed. And there was nothing left. We can talk about that in a minute, like what that's yeah. like. But there was nothing left. There was no individual. There was only what was happening. There but, was only life. But, but in, sorry, in that, there was a realisation that the idea that an individual had to make effort or purify themselves or become worthy to find this was completely and utterly misconceived. But what I'm, what I'm particularly interested in, were, as an individual beforehand, were you looking particularly intensely to try and find something or was it kind of a, some people say they give up and something happens what 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 was kind of going okay. on with you as an individual okay so as an individual about a year before this happened i wrote a great big thick book which i never published which really? was full of lists okay it was really talking in the same language i'm an individual and i you know and maybe i can find this and maybe you can and then i suddenly realized like the osho thing and the christianity that the whole thing was ridiculous it wasn't that wasn't it. That wasn't the answer. I threw the book away and went and played golf. <laughs> <laughs> so I just, there was no sense. Don't touch the microphone, otherwise it'll There was no sense, you know, anymore that, that what I thought I could find could be found by me. So for a year, I just played golf. I just played around. And we had a business that we were running, but I was doing nothing in terms of seeking yeah. in that way. Although subtly, of course, we're all seeking 